Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and in today's Dye Pot PS episode, we are going to play with some sock yarn from Wool to Dye For. These two skeins are Superwash Wool Nylon Blends, but they are actually Superwash BFL, which is Blue Faced Luster, a beautiful breed of sheep that I believe is from the UK, and it is honestly one of my favorite fires in the whole world to spin, but I don't think I have ever tried dyeing with it before because I've never had bare yarn with that fiber content before. So I have two uh, Superwash BFL nylon blends here. There's BFL Platinum, which is 75% Superwash BFL, 25% nylon. It's a four-ply sock yarn that ultimately is pretty similar to, say, the twist of Stroll. Uh, and then we have BFL High Twist, which is 80% Superwash BFL, 20% uh, nylon, and it's a two-ply high twist yarn. I have never dyed either of these, but I know they are so soft. Uh, how it compares to Merino, I mean, Merino is perfectly soft, obviously, <laughs> um, but it's really nice, and I'm expecting that it's going to dye really, really similarly, but I'm just really, really excited to play with these two blends. Um, and especially, you know, we're going to be dyeing a low twist yarn with a higher twist yarn at the same time, which I think will be really fun to compare and contrast. Both of the skeins come with three sets of butterfly ties that are nice and loose um, on them already, but I am going to go ahead and add like a nylon zip tie to it just for some ease. <laughs> I am pre-soaking the yarn in just some plain tap water for a minimum of 30 minutes. Today we are going to layer some colors in a kettle dyeing fashion, uh, but instead of mixing the three colors together and then kettle dyeing, we're first going to kettle dye in sage leaf, then we're going to dye it in a little bit of dark navy, and then in the end we will do a little bit of true black. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if all the yarn is going to stay in the pot to absorb all the dye, but I think that this will be really, really fun, and since we're doing these two different twists at the same time, maybe we'll see some fun differences. All of these are 1% stock solutions that I have mixed within the last couple of months. In my dedicated dye pot, I have 16 cups of water and I just added four tablespoons of white vinegar. I might decide to increase the amount of acid with each of the following steps, but this is sort of my typical pH that I like to use when dyeing yarn, whether acid dyes or food coloring. In last month's Dye Pot PS, when I was dip dyeing to try to break different colors of Dharma acid dye, uh, I didn't really get the sage leaf to break and I was a little surprised because it definitely um, it's one that I'd heard breaks and it definitely definitely breaks when you speckle. Um, I've heard this color can be a little temperamental in that uh, the different batches you can get from Dharma can vary but we're gonna start with a half cup of the sage leaf color and this is a 1% stock solution a half cup is about approximately 120 milliliters and we're going to be dyeing 200 grams of yarn to start with. And if I decide I want more, we can always do another round of this color. But now I am going to quickly add the yarn and move it around a bit so that way uh, the coverage, it'll still be a little uneven, but I want it to be yeah, I guess I want like all of the yarn to have access to the color, but with these zip ties on here, that should help me sort of order things again in the end. And I would like to give this opportunity to give a shout out to all of the patrons, um, including Ada Lai, Karen Siegel, and you can see a lot of the names of the fiber patrons on your screen now. Uh, Patreon is a wonderful platform that connects 
viewers with the content creators they really enjoy, and I offer my patrons some really, really fun perks. You can get early access to a new video every month, um, which is this Diepot PS series here. Uh, you can get advanced notice of shop restocks, permanent coupons to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, uh, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. You should really go check it out. There's a link in the video description and iCard. So I know we're not like dip dying per se, but ooh, you can see, ooh, I definitely, you know, I didn't see breaking with dip dying. I definitely see some kinds of breaking in here. I mean, there's this yellow at the end here, um, but I do see some areas that look more blue um, and more sort of yellowy, which I think is sort of a really fun way to start. Uh, there's that yellow left, but I mean, if I look at it in the spoon, it is real subtle. Um, but I think I am going to go ahead and leave this in the pot for 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and see if we need to add some more vinegar. Reducing the heat. And, okay, we have pretty much cleared. I would say the color right now is fairly medium to pastel. Uh, I would be both okay doing, yeah, I think I'm, I keep going back and forth. I think I'm gonna do another round of the sage leaf. Okay, slightly to the side. I am pouring the dye, but I'm not going to pour it into the pot yet. I am going to lift the yarn up, add the dye, and then add the yarn back in, and use my whoop, tongs to help move the yarn within the dye. So this is a second layer of this exact same color, and actually you can see Okay, I think that with the right, like, coloration and technique, like, you can definitely see some breaking in here. There is absolutely a yellow finish, um, and you can sort of see that some is more blue and more yellow, but I am now, again, I'll let this go for about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back. All right, now we definitely have much more of a medium color coverage. But there is still, and I'm not going to touch the tie because it's like, I mean, you can just see from even me picking it up that we do have a beautiful tonal yarn. Um, I'm going to set this aside, and after it cools a bit so I can comfortably handle it, we'll do the next color. The heat is still on, like, really low, so we've still got plenty of heat. I'm really happy with how both of these absorbed color so far. I mean, I expected them to absorb really similarly. Uh, nylon is a polyamide, which is basically the same structure as the backbone of a protein. So nylon does absorb color um, as well. So that slight difference in the 5% shouldn't affect the color a ton. What I'm expecting to see more of a difference from is the, is the amount of twist, and so therefore the amount of color that the different yarns can absorb. Okay, we have the same dye bath. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit, and I'm going to add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar, which is bringing us up to, I think, a total of eight so far. And now I'm going to add, let's see how much we have left. So that's one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do two tablespoons of the color Dark Navy. And we've just about tapped out that bottle. There's maybe one tablespoon left in there. We are hot. We are below a boil. And, oh goodness, we are about to go in. Our yarn, our yarn is still hot. Um, it's still definitely hot. Um, let's move it around and up. Ooh. That is really pretty. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so we've got 
some different levels of coverage on here and ooh, I think it's really really cool I do want to go into the navy again and ha, I thought I was gonna do three colors I might not <laughs> all right let's do the navy not entirely sure why we're bubbly but I am going to I'm sort of shifting the ties down from where they were located on our yarn to go in on another sort of dip here. Um, I do think that let me walk around. I do think that there's probably a lot less color. I think a lot of it has probably already bound, but we'll see if we can get sort of a tiny bit more in moving around one, two, three, and up to get slightly more even coverage oh you guys I am really really happy with this I like that we got a bit more coverage on here and this is giving the whole yarn a little bit more depth and dimension to it uh, yeah I'm gonna be curious to see if I notice that like maybe the higher twist feels more glazed than the other one there are definitely still some light patches but it is fun just layering this yarn yeah there's definitely some light patches in there and um, but I'm okay with that goodness maybe I should have chosen I debated heavily on like whether I should do the navy and I was like well if it's so shallow maybe and then you know I'll just do a tiny bit of black at the end but I went in a little heavier with the navy using the two tablespoons. So the nice thing with this is if there were, say, a portion where we wished there was like a tad bit more color, uh, you know, you could just quickly dip that in and set it aside. And I think there's one patch on this one that again, just quickly dip in and remove. And like the color, when you put it in, you can see that the colors are so, so much paler now than they were um, that I might actually I'm honestly debating going all the way in yeah I'm gonna go all the way in one more time I'm gonna go all the way in and just move things around and come out this is fun Oh, I am enjoying this so, so, so much. Because um, now, at this point, there's so little color left in our dye bath that, you know, it's each time, like, you can still see, like, some of these colors, like, coming through. Like, there's definitely, it's not broken, but we've got this navy and then the more green patches. And it's just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Uh, I know that what's left is overall pretty pastel. Um, ooh. All right, I'm going to leave these. I am really, really happy, and I love this color. And goodness, this is why sometimes doing things on the fly is sort of important. I was like, I thought that, oh, I'll go over this again with some black. But I love this too much to do that. I love this sort of depth and layered effect. Okay, I'm feeling pretty committed to the concept. I've got a skein here of dry Knit Pick Swish DK yarn, and we are gonna use this to absorb the rest of the navy. Um, we're gonna absorb the rest of the navy, and then we will do some sage leaf, and then we'll do some black because we will do our triple color layer. Uh, but I just like the other one so much that I didn't want to do it. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna let this go for about 10 minutes and let all the color absorb. All right, this is our really, really low level of navy. And now I'm gonna set up the dye bath for some sage leaf. That amount of navy was fairly tiny. I am gonna go with the same proportion of sage leaf that we were using before, so about half a cup per 100 grams. Um, and then if we decide, we could 
add a tiny bit of navy on top before going to the black, but we're just sort of going to see uh, what happens with our color. Okay. Our pastel color is still very, very warm, and our acid level is higher now than it was in the previous iteration, but wow. I think all of those blues in there struck really fast. So I'm just seeing sort of this yellow green uh, runoff now. But sort of moving it around a bit, and I'm going to let that uh, sit for 10 minutes now. 10 minutes, and our dye bath is clear. Yeah, basically clear. And so I'm going to quickly set this aside, but I think. Yeah, I'm gonna put a tiny bit more navy on it because that first bit was really, really pale. And I really wanna layer this three times. I don't have very much navy left. So <laughs> I'm gonna see if I have a half teaspoon. Oh yeah, probably could have done a full teaspoon, but this is a nice like small, small amount. Stir it up. All right, we're gonna go for it. Spread around, add color all around, and take the tongs and move it around. Give us that color. All right, and we'll give this probably five or 10 minutes to fully absorb, but uh, just so that way you guys can sort of see we're at Oh, that's almost clear completely. All right, I'm gonna give this about five minutes. <laughs> but yeah, we're at sort of this cool tealish color with bits of green poking through. Really, really pretty. Woo hoo hoo! Round. I guess this is technically round three for this yarn. That's pretty. Okay, let's get ready for round four. For this final step, uh, we will finally be using Dharma True Black. And I'm going to add a tablespoon of the true black to our pot. I'm going to stir this up. And I mean, you can see that it's not like mega concentrated or anything like that. I'm going to add a little more vinegar. So one, two, three tablespoons of vinegar, because that's the amount that I have aliquoted. I'm going to turn up the heat, and in just a second, we are going to add the yarn. And by that, just a second, I mean right now. And again, I am swirling it around. I'm moving it with both the tongs and the zip tie. I'm pulling it out. Still a lot of color in there, but the coverage we're getting is so pretty. I'm gonna go back in. Sort of dip it. It is just really, really pretty. Uh, yeah, I think I might just leave it there. Drain off that water and let me set it aside. We've got this color that feels, it almost feels like a greenish gray. Like you can see there's more green in it. I'm not seeing a ton of like that navy blue, but it's not really feeling teal anymore. Um, and it's just really, really pretty. Different from the others, but still really pretty. Let's wash our BFL soft yarn. Oh. You know, this yarn almost reminds me a bit of high school. My colors in high school were blue and green, and I know this green is like more teal, but something about it is just like bringing me back, uh, <laughs> bringing me back to school. But it does look like all of the colors in our yarn. I'm adding a tiny bit of clear disco, and yeah, it looks pretty, pretty darn good. Maybe there's a 
tiny hint of color. It's very tiny, but given how saturated this is, uh, not bad, not bad at all. I am thrilled, and I think the only thing I've said about is that these are technically two different yarn bases. So I would love to have two in this colorway. I really, really like it. But, anyway, we're gonna rinse it until the water is clear. And that's looking clear. And I'm gonna go put these through my Nina Seth spin dryer and then hang them up to dry. Now we're washing the Swish DK. And I'm also really excited about how this yarn came out. I think one little hack you can do if you wanna layer colors and you're not sure what the resulting colors will look like is that you can take um, like online, you can take say like a coral color and then you can make uh, some blocks of black or navy or red with you know 25% tra transparency or 75% transparency or something and layer it on top and see like what kind of colors come through. And so that's just sort of one way that you can just play around with color theory a bit um, before testing it out on your yarn. Yeah, but this is very, very, very pretty. And yeah, I'm gonna rinse out all the soap and add this to the spin dryer. Why don't I layer more colors like this? I'll layer colors in a pan, but really, I the only other time I think I've really done like multiple layers of kettle dyeing like this was when I attempted to glaze with purple way back in a very early episode of Dye Pot PS. And I love the way these colors came together. We started with some sage green, and then we layered on top navy in two different rounds, which gave us um, these colors that overall, uh, the level of saturation is uh, pretty level across the whole skein. There's some areas that are lighter and some areas that are a little darker on both skeins. We've got some lighter and some darker patches, but overall we've got these sort of shifts and it's very subtle and would work really well with a complicated stitch pattern because the color changes aren't going to be super distracting if you're to knit or crochet with this. As for the BFL itself, and we've got the 75% Superwash Blueface Luster, 25% Nylon, then our 80% BFL, 20% Nylon in the Higher Twist, and I think that these are both really, really great. They're really soft, and I just really, really like them. I think my favorite of the two is definitely the Higher Twist one, but I've really been enjoying high twist yarns in general because I like that definition that you get when you have a two ply high twist yarn versus a four ply sort of more lofty yarn. There was a point where I thought that the overall L saturation on the higher twist yarn was deeper than the lower twist because I thought maybe it's picking up a little bit more of a glazed effect from some of these colors, whereas the colors could be penetrating deeper on the loftier yarn. And there's definitely some points where uh, we have some shallow color penetration where it's glazed, so we have some points with the navy where you can definitely see uh, the sage leaf underneath. But I think that the same could be said for the BFL. Like I think that there is some glazed type effects on both of them. We dyed one final skein of yarn because my plan was to do this in three rounds and do sage leaf, then navy, then black. And I did want to go for it. So with this Knit Picks Swish Decay yarn, I started off soaking up some leftover navy, then I dyed it in some sage leaf, then I did a little more navy, and then finally I glazed it in a tiny bit of black. Um, that gave us this yarn that there's some similarities to what we have over here, but the colors almost feel a little more muted because the black, I think, warmed up the coolness from the sage leaf and navy a little bit. 
since we layered this yarn with three distinct colors, uh, I feel like we do see like three different hues within this really subtle shifting yarn. Um, there's a little bit almost warm, like purpley black. Uh, there's some parts that are a little bit more blue and then parts that are a little bit more yellow green in here. And again, this is a lovely, subtle yarn that would uh, lend itself beautifully to a lot of different projects. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did dyeing this yarn. Uh, I am so excited and inspired and really want to play with um, multiple layers of kettle dyeing to layer different colors on top of each other more in the future. I want to give another huge thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons for supporting all of the content that I create here on this channel. Uh, you can find links in the video description and iCard if you want to go check it out and join our community that we have over there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, smash that bell icon to turn on notifications, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.